Tonight, I wear a hat. Richard wears a hat. And James wears a hat. Everybody, good news. No, wait, it's better than you think. The new Dacia Duster <laughs> is coming to the UK. Okay. How about that? That's great. Okay, to Braithwell in South Yorkshire now, and a blooming mystery that's baffling its green-fingered residents. Harry is there for us. Harry, what's going on? Welcome here to beautiful Braithwell. You can see the sun exploding on a kaleidoscope of colour. And I have to say, there's been a real area of controversy here because... Oh, well, okay, my God! Are you all right, sir? Are you all uh, right? Yeah, I'm getting used to it now, thanks. Oh. Thanks right. very much. If you could just put me back on the wheels. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I just say, that this was the actual photograph that Ferrari sent to us to show what the car looked like at the Nürburgring. Now, I'm not sure it's particularly brilliant. If we look at the graffiti on the track... <laughs> That's not a map of the Nürburgring, is it? Is it? No. I just... <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> they didn't see that. <laughs> You've seen it now. And I have Too to late. say... I have to say, the man who is responsible for this piece of graffiti has also been at work in Russia on a drawbridge. Uh, I've got a picture here. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, you know, Barack Obama's been prattling on about British petroleum and this is 9-11 times a thousand, this oil spill. Did you hear how the uh, English football fans responded during the American game the other day? Did you hear that? They were actually singing, you're not swimming anymore. <laughs> This car is like an elephant with the reflexes of a water boatman. And if you're watching in Poland and you don't know what a water boatman is, it's like an Evo 10, it really is. And if you're watching in Ethiopia and you don't know what an Evo 10 is, what I mean is it does things rather well. No, not well. Why did I say well? Oh, God. Yeah. Now, have a look at this. This is a device. It fits on the exhaust pipe of your car, and as you drive along, it cooks a burger for you. <laughs> it's brilliant. What? In the exhaust fumes? No, no, no. The exhaust fumes don't, don't cook the burger. It's like a, you know, like a toasted sandwich maker. The, the hot gas from the exhaust heats it up and then it griddles the burger yeah, in between the two bits. It's a bit close to the whole exhaust process well, well, so, for food. Your well, testes are close to your bottom, but you still play with them all the time. And... <laughs> Even though I was driving on lava that had fallen days ago, it was still red hot and the Top Gear vodka tyre cooling system was working overtime. Right, what I need is for a piece to land quite near me and then I can reach out of the window and grab it. Bravely, I decided that was far enough. Oh, my word. I don't know if you can see this as well as I can, but there's raining red hot lumps. It's, like, it's quite... God, that's hot. Don't ever faint in Holland. That would be my uh, Top Gear top tip for the night. We've got some footage here that explains what I'm on about. It's the start of a race. There's the grid girl. Oh, she's got a bit wobbly. And she's fainted. There you go. <laughs> so you're thinking, poor girl. Yeah, you're thinking, oh, no, now she's lying on the track. So as we can see, men in high visibility jackets have come over to make sure she's OK. Or are they making sure she's OK? How do you make... Oh, put your hand on her bottom. He's That's the ticket. He's That's what he's done. Now, let's hear what the driver's got to say. Check my auto. Man. <laughs> oh, oh, pull my auto. Pull. No. <laughs> Is my auto okay? <laughs> Get the girl off! Here we go. Reliant Robin. Oh, no. Oh. oh, no. I've crashed it. I've crashed it almost immediately. I mean, literally 20 feet. Well, I can't get out of this. Reason you two didn't buy a Ford Sierra Sapphire Cosworth is because you forgot about it. No, it's because when you think of high performance four door saloons, you naturally think of Germany. It's what they do. Here. Exactly. And where was yours made? It was, it was designed by a man called Boer Banson, who uh, is German. And where, where was it built? Belgium. 
<laughs> oh, Belgium, the mecca for the performance motorists. Yeah. Belgium is home to everything, tennis players, mm. chips. It's not the first place you think of going for a performance saloon. That is I guarantee you are going to lose this and you will end up in Sekula. What's it? Not go around roundabouts. You get to it and you see where you're coming off and you go straight across. Right. Try to avoid <laughs> nearly middle. Right. <laughs> Can't <laughs> spend on passing your seat off. Cement? Yeah, yeah sack of cement, cement on passenger seat helps balance it. Why do you think Reliant owners have big toolboxes? <laughs> <laughs> to weigh it down. I was going to say, your teeth. Did you lose these in a Reliant accident? <laughs> you did, didn't you? 151. Mine had to be limited to 155. This was when they introduced limiting. They realised it's too fair fast, enough, it's a enough, monster. It was enough, limited. Fair enough, because this had the six cylinder engine, 3.2 yeah, litres. Yep. James, I seem to remember this was not that fast. No. What was its top speed? 143. 143? Yes. So not really a performance car. But I reckon mine will still do that because oh. it is a Mercedes Benz. Oh. What? What? Oh, what? Oh, my God. God! Ah, the interior, yeah. Have you seen the inside of his car? Oh, toffee and caramel, that interior is. It's not. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. he's gone oh, yeah. for the fake wood door oh, yeah. pulls. That's a quality touch. <laughs> right, we've got to get out of Berlin. OK. What's that? I don't know. It wasn't there this morning. <laughs> you don't think it fell out of James's luggage, do you? <laughs> <laughs> fell out of my what? I, I missed that. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> I have secured some top secret film taken inside the factory of the new Dacia Duster being made. Excellent. Excellent. Anyway, um, the end of... <laughs> I'm sure you have. I'm sure you like it very much. Uh, the end of last week's programme, this appeared. This is called The End Board. Um, this is what you see every single week at the end of every single programme, except for Top Gear, look. MMXX. <laughs> That's 2020. <laughs> This is the only programme coming from ten years in the future. <laughs>the tallest thing here. It's not as bad as you think, actually. I'm trying to be killed by lightning. What? I'm trying to be killed by lightning. Sorry? Have you deaf? Sorry? Uh, let me talk you through it, OK? £650,000. <laughs> For that, you get internet uh, uh, connectivity, you get DVD, TB, a cigar humidor, uh, and according to one report, it can resist gunfire for 24 hours. Do you know what? I, th I think if I was shooting at someone, I'd get sort of bored after about four hours. I think the police would have arrived by four hours, well, personally. Yeah, but forgive me, it is a car. You'd kind of drive off before. <laughs> <laughs> after an hour, they, yeah, they're not going to change their mind. He's I'm still, going away. He is still shooting at me. Yeah. And the other thing as well is, it's made in Canada. Who in Canada could do... Are you Canadian? Whatever happens in Canada that would cause somebody to shoot at somebody else for 24 hours? <laughs> the other thing as well is if you are shooting at it, it's not likely you're going to miss, because here's a picture of it next to a Hummer. Look at the size of it. It is massive. Oh, oh my God. It's Angelina Jolie. No. Hammond, I've just remembered. What? It's June the 10th, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. My yes. wife's birthday. What, today? Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. I'm going to... No, seriously, I'm going to go now, this second. What? what? Now? This second. And I'm going to get her a birthday present. Next guest is here. He's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Real man's man, you know. I'm, honestly, I'll be back. I'll be back. What's I look after yes. this? Yes, yes. What's he called? Louis. Where's Jeremy going? Hello. All right. Hello. I'm Bill. Nice to meet you. Hello, Louis. You all right? Hello, Louis. Louis seemed very friendly. Oh, mind, you're getting a triple there, darling. Just dribbling on you. Yeah, it's dribbling on you. Back. Um, I've got some of the letters here, lots of them. Let me just read you this one, OK? It says, Dear Top Gear, the only reason why Mr so-called Clarkson was killed is because he wasn't driving it properly. I bet if the Stig drove it, he'd be fine. <laughs> Tell you what, let's find out. <laughs> now, I bet you he rolls that over. No, this is a Stig. The only thing that's ever defeated him was that Koenig thing. Yeah, just, he so will he, not be able to do a lap in no. that car without rolling over. I sure. guarantee it. He'll use his special Here he is, coming up to the first corner now. 
There you go. Absolutely fine. fine. And so well, he's made his... Oh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's a what if you're driving along with the roof down and suddenly it starts to rain? Exactly. What a remarkable coincidence. Oh, no, I need to erect the top tent. What you do is you open the boot. Then you take out this bit, which is called the sun shield. Then you get in the car, you attach it at the front first. Ah! Like that. And then you get that bit behind you. Hang on, I'm sorry if I may just take that from you and ask you to stand to one side because my car was £2,990, <laughs> meaning I have... Start tonight with a letter. It's from a chap called Alan Massive Liar, and it says, <laughs> Dear Jez, Dick and Jim, uh, I want a convertible supercar, but I only have £113,500 to spend. Can you help? Well, this is very timely, actually, because as it happens, no, we can't. <laughs> oh. oh, great. Two long, noisy things. That's just no <laughs> work. One long, noisy thing. They don't work. Well. They don't. Look. <laughs> <laughs> what was all the fuss about then? <laughs> Look, they were terrifyingly loud. That's well, I mean, I might have drunk some tequila through it, I admit, after the match, but it doesn't work. You, tr you won't be. You've got a degree. <laughs> I'll go, if you play a solo, I'll kick you. System, okay, and they recently invited uh, all the world's press over to Sweden to have a look at a system which, you know, it basically sees the obstacle. If it thinks the driver's not concentrating, we've fallen asleep, or he's blind, or he's blind, <laughs> it will break for you. So here's their test. Okay, this was just a couple of weeks ago. in what appeared to be a block of flats on top of an old Citroen. <laughs> Look at it! Come on. It's enormous! It's absolutely superb. Do you ever watch Grand Designs? Yes. Yeah, you do? Yes, yes I have. Yes, Kevin McLeod, yeah. Every single thing they build looks like this. The indented windows, it's modern, it's crisp. No, he'd, it's... he'd love it. He'd love to ask which cock stuck that on top of a Citroen. Do... This is yep. hideous. It's stone effect, which is right for the whole Land Rover <laughs> thing. It's... <laughs> it's <clears throat> hideous, baggy... Yes. The... <laughs> <laughs> what manner of terrible thing has happened under my bonnet? It's actually had diarrhoea, is what's happened here. At the campsite, I settled down to watch Hammond's creation take shape. Yeah, oh yeah. Ah! <laughs> Ow! It doesn't work, because I was in a cab in Piccadilly the other day, OK? A woman in a full burqa crossing the road in front of me, or in front of the cab, tripped over the sort of pavement, went head over heels. Face over apex. Yeah. And up it came, red G-string, stockings. <laughs> Mate, that, I did, that did not I happen. I promise You're it. Lying. I did it. promise. No. It did. Did you see this incident on DVD or pay-per-view? <laughs> Taxi the taxi driver will back me up on that. He, well, he, he was in the cinema with you. <laughs> that never happened. It did. It didn't happen. uh, next week, Jeremy visits a hospital and a nurse's top falls off. <laughs> <laughs> Citroen UK has appointed a new sales director, OK? And his name is Charles Peugeot. No, it isn't. <laughs> I have photographic proof from Citroen, Charles <laughs> Persia. <laughs> what are you thinking? What's his email address going to be? Charles.Persia at Citroen. <laughs> stupid. Hang on, hang on. What if there are lots of people called Charles Persia working at Citroen, so he ends up being Charles... <laughs> <laughs> Charles.Persia 405. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, look. 
So it's done the same in the games room? Yeah, brought the roof down onto the pool table, and the living room, and the cinema. I promise you, Hammond, it was worse for How me. How could it be worse for you? The roof fell in on my library. I promise you, it was worse for me. What's worse than that? Oh, yeah, that, that's worse. Morning. Oh, God. Is that just the wind did that? Oh, yeah, no, a big giant cat. They were so engrossed in this idiocy, they failed to spot an incoming problem. James, we've got to get out. No! I almost got up. You got it! What? The cars. Ah! Uh, uh, James and Richard rushed to their cars and legged it, whereas I decided to get changed where I was. Uh, which went well. No! Yes, come on, Hasselhoff. I wasn't tense. Is it? And the first thing you'll notice is it's covered in this space age foil stuff. Back here, there's this massive wing, all very traditional Porsche. But under here, nothing. Because this is the first mid engine 911. And what an engine it is. So right now it's running on Frosties and one of those chocolatey croissant things and half a cup of coffee. But it could equally run on fish and chips I had last night or a big bag of quavers. Really anything that the driver can eat. Okay, first corner coming up. Good thing about this of course, plenty of time to be precise about your lines. Bloody hell, look at the speed of that! 258, 200, I'm going faster than I can speak. 300, 320. That is amazing, it's so stable. I'm already up to 340. Buddy, Nora. It's unbelievable, look how fast everything's going past. There's 400. In Queen's English, that's 248 miles per hour. suggesting that now we open the Guinness Book of World Records next to you and it says fastest man on earth James May <laughs> not exactly what do you mean not exactly well after I'd done my run Bugatti sent their test driver out because he thought he'd like a crack at it and this is what happened so there he goes he's got to do uh, a run in each direction and take an average there's my old record already going for a Burton <laughs> As we can see, the speedo is still climbing. There's him celebrating. I added my congratulations soon afterwards. Damn him. <laughs> can I just say, what, it, what staggers me is sitting here, it's almost <laughs> like I've been joined by the genetic blueprint for the human race with these things. <laughs> it's just if you're going to design the point, oh, then evolution will reach a point where they look like this. <laughs> Because how do you know, you embark on axing when you're in your late teens, you're, how do you know that later on in life you aren't going to become, well... <laughs> well, I mean, for instance, Tom, why don't you have ear hair? Next time I come on the show, I'll be like this. Yeah, just... <laughs> you see, this is James's actual car, the car in which he keeps a little brush for cleaning the air vents. And he said we could borrow it, providing we didn't fiddle with any of the settings or make it dirty in any way. These chocolate bars just go everywhere. Um, anyway, he also said I wasn't to um, drive it quickly. He made me promise that I wouldn't, for instance, do a drag race with it. And I said, James, I give you my word. I will not drive your car fast at all. I didn't, however, say anything about him. Maybe she get an end go now. Give me the right car. Now, um, just briefly, has anybody this week seen this in the newspapers? I mean, it's the most ridiculous. I think it was actually an accent thing. <laughs> no, it was an accent, because what she actually said was, 
revolting, but it came out like fantastic. That's what she was. No, it's just. I, it's just. I, no, I think actually what's happened here um, is they they've had to cut the quote to make it fit on the newspaper, and they've had to take out an imbecile, but James May is. Yeah. Which would have gone. No, she didn't say that, James, because you didn't say one word to her when she was down here, or you. You, honestly, Tom Cruise arrived last week. These two. Oh, Tom, I've got an old motorbike as well. Would you like to come? You can wear leather trousers and go off into the countryside no. and drink orange juice. We couldn't it, get near to Cameron because she was entirely surrounded by you. Uh, she, she hugged me three times. She's an actress. She was pretending you. <laughs> Not in my mind, she wasn't. In her mind, she was remembering the advice. Now, Cameron, hug the big monster and pretend it's not scary. <laughs> She was sick I'm now on her to-do list. <laughs> uh, now, as you probably saw, if you were watching the Grand Prix coverage last weekend, the Williams team uh, bought Rubens Barrichello a T-shirt. Here he is wearing it. <laughs> he looks really happy. Yeah, well, he is really happy. He's so happy, in fact, he's bought all the other Grand Prix drivers who've been down to Top Gear over the years T-shirts. And here's Jensen Button wearing his. Oh. <laughs> I think that demonstrates that somebody in Formula One has got a sense of humour. Yeah, yeah. I reckon if we... Oh, hang on. Well, that's... Oh, sh in weather like this, among scenery like that, holidaying in England, even in a motorhome, does make sense. Is that all right? What? What's that? <laughs> you see, did anyone see the Grand Prix last weekend? Yeah. The, uh, the controversy, uh, for those of you who didn't, what uh, the rules say, Rule 39.1 to be specific, says no team is allowed to, uh, I think it's interfere, isn't it, with the race result. Uh, now, what that means is you can't tell one of your drivers to pull over and let the other one go by. Okay, you can't do that. And to make sure the teams don't cheat, the stewards monitor the radio traffic between the pits and the cars, OK? So Ferrari needed last week for Massa to get out of the way and let Alonso go by, so they used a coded message. <laughs> you want to guess what it was? Was it, uh, Philippe, the rain in Paris falls in May? Was no, it, it wasn't that. No, it was a blue badger flies over to the crafty cow. I don't know. No, it's it coded. wasn't that. What they actually said was, Fernando is faster than you. Can you confirm you understand this message? <laughs> it's not much of a code, is it, really? It's so much breaking. If the, if, the, if the German Navy had had a code like that in World War II, we'd have beaten them in about a week, because it would have said, the destroyers are to the left. <laughs> The interesting thing for me is the punishment. You may remember uh, last year or year before, McLaren were caught looking over somebody's shoulder and copying their homework. And they were fined $100 million and had all their points taken away. Ferrari, for this infringement, were fined $100,000, which is what they pay Alonso every day. Really? <laughs> That's all they were fined for completely corrupting the outcome of a world championship. It's disgusting. And actually, the only honourable cause of action is that for all Ferrari owners, all of mm -hmm. them, to go outside now and smash their cars up. Yeah. <laughs> I think burn them. Yeah, and then kill themselves. Yeah. Just because it's the only decent, the decent thing to do, really, all Ferrari owners. What I actually think, I'm not just saying this because of all that stuff you've just been through, but I think Ferrari were right, actually, to do that. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, team orders, uh, they should allow them, no question. Because if I ran a team, I'd have one really fast car, then I'd have some, well, me, basically, driving around at the back, and anyone who tried to lap me, I'd shoot them with a BB gun. That's a team. Yeah, that's just or together. a paintball gun. <laughs> Yeah, just fit your second car with a massive wing that nobody can get past. Yeah, he's at the back, nobody can get past. Well, yeah, I... The thing about a steering wheel is, it moves. So none of the buttons are ever where you left them. I mean, if I want to turn left now, I have to push this one on the right. Now, uh, that's the right, that's the left-hand indicator. And if I want to turn on the lights, uh... Oh, no, that, that's not it. This isn't like driving, it's like playing Pelmanism. And there's more. You see, there are two screens on either side of the rev counter. The one on the left tells me all sorts of things I'm not really very interested in. Uh, the one on the right is a speedo or a sat-nav screen. You can't have both at the same time. So you know where you are, you just don't know how fast you're going. Why didn't they just ring the Taliban and say, look, if you stop shooting at us, we'll give you a 1997 Shogun we've got part of it. 
We ought to make it clear, actually, that under this scrappage scheme, the cars that were taken off the road under the scheme when they were part of the have to be scrapped. They can't be sold. No. They, they have they, to be destroyed. All these cars have to be scrapped. If you think about it, all the energy that went into making these cars in the first place, now all the energy that's going to go into crushing them, and then all the energy that goes into making new cars for people who wouldn't otherwise have bought new cars if it mm. wasn't for this scheme. It's all true. Um, the BBC got some stick this week for uh, uh, allegedly over-promoting Peter Mandelson's new book, so let's redress that balance. Don't buy it. Nice. <laughs> that's balance it up the tree, as he even spared. It's for BBC as well. Now, there's a new Nissan Micra out, and that is the end of the news. Um, <laughs> now. Critically, the Elan is front-wheel drive because it's just better. At the same time this car was coming out, Mazda were bringing out the MX-5 rear-wheel drive, old-fashioned. And as a result, the MX-5 never really caught on. I mean, it sold in massive numbers for decades. But it, it didn't have the same exclusivity that the Elan did, which never sold in the same vulgar, brash numbers. Sometimes with this engine you do notice that the oil pressure could drop alarmingly in a fast corner. It's okay, the engine would never blow up because normally the water pump would go first. A very useful feature, that. When you press the throttle in the TVR, there is a slight delay before anything happens. A lot of people thought this was a fault, but actually, very innovative safety feature. I'll demonstrate. You're driving along, you press the throttle, and the car says, are you sure? Oh, all right then. Historic and beautiful Midlands. I have never looked forward to a journey more. We do have a magnificent flag in Britain. I mean, that one's on upside down, but beautiful flag. OK, let the journey commence. Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. Delly Astra. Yeah, is that it, was uh, a known fault that they would blow up sometimes. Don't you remember that? Yeah, I yeah. had two friends who had those and they blew up. Yeah, absolutely. It's really I, annoying because if you're late for something, oh. and then you're, I'll get in the car, bang, oh, it's, oh dear. Yeah. So there we are. I mean, what we can deduce here is the German made hatchback, the German made hatchback has exploded and uh, all the British made sports cars are working perfectly. Hang on. What? It won't start. Oh. Uh, guys? Yeah? It does so close to 35 mile an hour speed limit. The Blue Ridge Parkway is 469 miles long. It can't all be 35 miles an hour. It can't be. I was right. It wasn't. It's now 25, 25 miles an hour here, chaps. What? what? I'm sure I get round here and there'll be another sign with a cross, just go for it. But no, it turned out that the fastest you can ever drive on this road is 45. Put it in the comfort setting. May as well. Another safety feature were the fantastically uncomfortable seats fitted to a Jensen, which meant you couldn't drive too far without taking a break. Ah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. There you go. We've done about 20 miles so far, which, if you're watching this abroad, is about seven or eight hundred kilometres. Oh, do come on. And my back, I mean, after a distance like that, your back is going to suffer a bit. This is Robert Johnson, the mayor of North Wilkesboro. Howard Myers, I need your help. You need to get Tom McNeil back down to his tire shop for us to get a tire put on this uh, Mercedes. Call, have him to call me, Edie Watt, Chop Chop. <laughs> I don't think Boris Johnson would do this no, for us. I was just us. thinking that. It's got a surprise call from the mayor. Yeah. Down at the tyre shop, the fitter only spoke hillbilly. I got an old 4040. It takes a rim clamp to change them. 
Oh, shit, what's his name down there? Uh, used to be on Main Street, and he's over at Swapper's old building. David Mann? He got a rim clean. Man. Roughly translated, he didn't have the right tyre. So Boss Hogg got back on the phone and found another man who thought he might have something suitable in stock. Ah, oh, now, Rich, would you like some pussy? <laughs> well, it wasn't on my mind right now. It is now. I, uh... Pussy energy drink. <laughs> I see. I did what one. flavour is it? Flavour? <laughs> Leave it. Look at this. No. no. Tilt the phone ah, forwards. Ah, I'm genuinely scared. Now go backwards. No, no! 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 Oh, no. Oh, oh, great. oh, like that. With a good grip, it's going to, in, in, in a sense, not kick up so much. But nice and firm grip, and as you punch straight out, side in on the target. You, if you hold it up on the target, fire. The figures suggest that Schumacher and Fangio were better, but the people who know, they tell a different story. I think uh, Senna, I will put him in number one. Uh, for me, Senna is uh, number one. For me, he was number one. I will put uh, Ayrton Senna as number one. For me, Ayrton Senna undoubtedly was the number one. I will put him number one. You know, he was definitely the greatest driver. If you ask me, I put Senna as well in number one. Martin Brundle, who raced against the Brazilian for 11 years, is well qualified to explain why Senna was the ultimate driver's driver. He had a God-given talent that I haven't witnessed anywhere else. Um, a sixth sense of where the grip was before he turned into a corner. If you look at this Lotus here, even when it's going in a straight line, it is dancing. It Absolutely. The, and there. You look at these and you think, Here we go. I can't do that. I think Senna's ability to be able to drive completely on the limit. Uh, some of the laps he did, we know, were, uh, were unbelievable. I mean, this, this is just... This is manic. Look, look at, at this. That. How he reads those two guys is absolutely on it, isn't he? This <laughs> is... Look at that. Nobody, in the end, wanted to spoil Senna's pole lap. And when you saw the day glow McLaren and the very bright helmet of Ayrton Senna, he would come through and we literally jumped out of the way. You didn't want to be the one they all talked about as having blown the lap that the whole of the Grand Prix venue was looking forward to. But it wasn't just out-and-out -out speed that made Senna special. He was, he was so good because he was working so hard on details. And I improved the car also there and there, but he went in the fine details. That's why it was fantastic. Yeah, the worst is here. The worst is the second chicane yeah. and the third chicane. Yeah. But it's because the asphalt goes like this, in the third chicane and it's like this. The second chicane is becoming bumpy. And if I think back to when I was his test driver at the beginning of the 94 season, uh, after the second day, he had a small incident and tweaked his neck. And that was it. The test was over as far as he was concerned. Uh, I came in the following day and he was there in the morning. And I thought, oh, OK, he must have made a miraculous recovery. But in actual fact, he was just there to listen to what I was saying to the engineers, to work out whether he could trust my feedback. And when I compare that to Nigel Mansell, when I was his test driver, he would set a lap time, and then he would bugger off to the golf course. Another weapon in Senna's armoury was his utter ruthlessness. Sean Prost having a look, and Senna's crowding into the pit wall. Schumacher trying to take Ayrton Senna. Now, let's see if the Brazilian moved across. Indeed, he did. He often uh, used to put us in a position um, that you were going to have an accident, and he would leave it up to you to decide whether to have that accident or not. 
Martin experienced this psychological warfare, first of all, when racing against Senna in Formula 3. Well, look, I've got a great big lead here, and he launches in from nowhere, and then parks his Rolt on my shoulder. I couldn't get out of the car until they lifted his car off the top of mine. So and when he formed... wanted to overtake, he'd, he'd go on the inside and put the car in a place. If you tried to take the corner, you're going to hit him. Yes, he, he would put you in a compromising position and then leave you to make the decision. And if you didn't run into him, um, then psychologically you were buried and finished. He would then know that every time after that he showed you a wheel, you'd jump out of the way. He's got Mantle climbing all over him. He has no reason to stay. Here, Senna would be world champion, providing his arch rival Alain Prost, now at Ferrari, failed to finish. So, at the first corner, he made sure Prost failed to finish. Alain Prost has taken the advantage. Senna is trying to go through on the inside, and it's happened immediately. This is amazing. Senna goes off at the first corner. Yes, and that makes Ayrton Senna world champion this year. He doesn't even try to break. No, no, no. He, I mean, at that point, when they're back there, Senna, if he wanted to stay in the race, you'd have seen two puffs of blue smoke from his front tyres. Mm. where he, That gap was always going to disappear. He was driving into a disappearing wedge. After the crash, he showed absolutely no contrition. When there is a gap, you either commit yourself as a professional racing driver that is designed to win races, or you come second, or you come third, or you come fifth. And I'm not designed to come third, fourth, or fifth. I race to win. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. Strangely, Senna had a big heart. He was a devout Christian capable of extraordinary compassion. When fellow racing driver Eric Comas crashed at Spa in 1992, Senna stopped and risked his own life running across the track to help. You see, that's the paradox of Ethan Senna, isn't it? In that he was clearly a fantastic human being. And he, had, he cared about people in Brazil, he cared about racing drivers. I mean, he was mortally hurt when uh, Ratzenberger died, the day before he died. Um, but then he would crash Alain Prost off the racetrack and put both their lives at risk. Woo! I can't believe that I'm... Oh, jeez. <laughs> So you've just got back from the Canadian Grand Prix this morning? Yeah. I couldn't sleep. Really? I spent like an hour or so on the flight. I couldn't get to sleep. I was just... Because you get to drive centers and just can't, Yeah, I just can't imagine what it's going to be like. I just have this, I have this sound in, in, uh, in my head of the car roaring and going through Monaco streets when he's one-handed. I'm just going to go one-handed around and just see what it's like around one of the corners. Let's go, let's go. Can I go? Back in the mid '80s, it was. I mean, there's a there's an incredible scene I think with Nelson Piquet overtaking Senna on full opposite lock. I mean, very little in the way of safety, very little in the way of aerodynamic grip. Manual gearbox, 1,200 horsepower. Yeah, and the the cockpit, you could almost punch through it. Yeah. <laughs> so you think, geez, you know, you'd be. You're driving around at those speeds, your wheel falls off, the mechanic makes a mistake, you're dead. Um, it's, f it's phenomenal, and I can't even contemplate what it would have been like. But, uh, so that's why I think you have even more respect for the guys that did it back then. I mean, you had to be back in the 80s. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs>